Hey there, and welcome to the Business of Business podcast. Here we are two daughters and their dad seeking to inspire and educate you to follow your dreams of being in business by teaching you the business of being in business. The good, the bad, the humor are all parts of our unique perspective as an entrepreneurial family. Thanks for joining us. So grab a coffee, turn up the volume. Here we go. Dempsey Weiss & Associates is a multi-line insurance agency successfully meeting the insurance and financial needs of the landscaping, business contractor, and agricultural community in southern New Jersey and southeastern Pennsylvania since 1989. To learn more, visit us at www.dempseyweiss.com. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Business of Business podcast, Two Daughters and Their Dad. I am your host, Stacey J. Dempsey, and as always, thankfully, we have the dad and the other daughter, <laughs> Jack and Jennifer. Hi, guys. Good afternoon. How are you guys today? Hey, guys. Hey, I'm doing well. Very well. Great. We are still doing our podcast via Zoom to be respectful of all things COVID-19. Um, so although we're not together, we are still together and we're, we're yes. chucking right along with our podcast. So um, this I'm is noticed so Zoom feels like it's gotten better. I don't know. It's like it's, it, it does, you know, I think uh, I'm talking about the quality of, you know, I mean, I feel like I'm on about 50 Zooms a week these days, but it, it does feel like they're, getting getting better quality well i'm wondering how that got on the zoom call without his his assistant and i didn't know you were able to do that by yourself <laughs> yeah well um i had him come in friday and set it up for me it's been on ever since friday <laughs> <laughs> committed to the podcast by all okay. means necessary so i love it well, like I said, we are doing this this via Zoom. So if we do have any technical difficulties, just bear with us. But I, I don't think that we'll encounter anything that we haven't so far. So today we want to talk about really a common question that um, you know, some, you know, many entrepreneurs have, and that's how and when to add profit centers to your business. Um, I know that Jennifer has just recently kind of taken this on. Um, certainly Jack, you know, in 30 years of business has has done just that, added different profit centers. And at least the entrepreneurs that I know can be very creative, honestly. Um, but that doesn't mean that the creative idea is really the best, you know, for another profit center really isn't maybe the best fit. So um, definitely looking to, to you first, Jennifer, on, you know, some ways, you know, I know that you are starting a different profit center in your, in your hair studio. So maybe you can talk a little bit about, about that and, and maybe answer the questions of how and when you decided to do that. Well, it's funny, we were talking about this topic and, you know, I remember I don't know, maybe a few years ago, calling dad and saying, with my wonderful ideas that I normally have, this is what I want to do. I want to start buying houses and renting them out. And his response to me was, well, why in the world would you do that? <laughs> in our typical <laughs> dad response that we get. Um, and so your response and your explanation to me, Dad, made a lot of sense. Do you want to share your side so I'm not talking for you? Well, right. I mean, at the time, I mean, again, it, you know, that in itself is not a terrible idea. You know, it's again, how does it line up with what you're focusing on in your business now? And it's just apples and oranges, you know, so it's a it's a start and stop. You're running, you're trying to build your hair studio and do things there um, to, to grow that business. And now you're starting a completely different business that requires, you know, different thinking, different skill set, And so I just, you know, it just would be incongruent, you know, in that, in, in where you were at with your current business. So, um, that's why I said that. I don't think I quite said it that way. I'm, you know, I think I said, um, what are you crazy? That doesn't make any sense. I think it was something more like that. You know, I might be wrong. It was a couple months ago. So I think, you know, there's, 
again, we hear about it all the time. We read about having, you know, multiple streams of income. I think it's natural, especially for entrepreneurs and really everyone nowadays, especially the world that we live in, to think about how can we have multiple streams of income um, to live a more comfortable life, make more money, X, Y, and Z. So, you know, for example, opening, you know, a hair salon, obviously we brought in hair products and, um, you know, we encourage our guests that come into the salon, we're working so hard on this beautiful color. We don't want it to just wash down the drain. So we, you know, we recommend this shampoo, this conditioner, these styling products. Um, and that's what we had. That's a part of our job, right? Like that's what we study. So not only are our clients getting their hair done, color cut treatments, they can also take home products to maintain um, everything that we did for them in the salon. So that's one example of how we've added a profit center. Um, and it just makes sense, right? So again, everyone that works in the salon industry um, does this and is encouraged to do this. And, uh, and in our world, our stylists actually make a profit as well um, from selling or recommending take home hair care products. Right. That, I mean, see, that's kind of a natural, you know, like, like you said, Jen, that's a very natural add on additional profit center that you would have. One of the things that when entrepreneurs are looking at, you know, their core business and what additional profit that you always want to look at, what would just be kind of that very natural add on? Obviously, if I'm opening a, you know, a high end, you know, sneaker retail store, I'm clearly going to be looking at socks and products that will extend the life of the shoe and shoe strings and all these products that are just very natural extension to the sale of that shoe. Um, because, you know, you definitely want to make sure that when you have the customer or the client in your establishment, you know, that you are offering things to add to the profit of that of that person coming into your your re retail establishment so that's very natural now let's take what you're you're looking at jennifer with adding the online super super exciting we're launching an online store and really how it came about was when the salon was shut down for three months you know really thinking to myself look how easily it a pandemic has affected just my personal income and being able to take care of my family. Um, three months without making any money is hard. On top of that, trying to be creative, trying to stay engaged with our clients. I was coming into the salon, you know, and um, our guests were coming by picking up shampoo and conditioner and things like that. Once we reopened, we had a ton of phone calls, a ton of people comment. Am I even allowed to come into the salon just to buy my hair care products? Right? So it was, it was very confusing. So that's really where the vision for the online store came about. How can we reach more people with what we already have? And so when I brought the topic up to actually Stacy's husband who built my website. He's like, of course we can. Your website could have done this five years ago. Five years ago, I wasn't thinking about an online store, right? Now um, we are. So obviously getting that all set up into place has been challenging and exciting and, and all of those things. But the goal is to just be able to reach you know, start with our clients and have a further reach with what we already retail inside of our store. And the most exciting part is then what's next, right? So, right. you know, in my mind and in my world, I think, especially for salons, it will eventually get to a place where we will have to go more online, which right now in the hair industry is kind of non-existent. And, you know, obviously on top of that, it would have been a game changer during a three month shutdown to be able to go ahead and move and really focus in and, and move products through the online store 
and still have profit to take care of my family, take care of what was going on at the salon. So that was really the, the motive behind all of that. J Faith Hair Studio, centrally located in Southern New Jersey. J Faith Hair Studio is the place to go to become the best version of yourself. Confidence in your appearance is always important and a great hairstyle is an absolute necessity. Visit jfaithhairstudio.com to book your appointment today. Right. So out of the, what you, I think the other thing that you shared with me, Jen, was that out of the pandemic where, you know, everything is going virtual, some of the feedback that you received that kind of helped you push to take your profit center to be online was that you were getting feedback from people saying, well, it's just easier to order it off of Amazon, order a shampoo and conditioner off of Amazon than scheduling a time when I can come and pick up you know, shampoo and conditioner from you, which I'd rather do it, but you know, the ease of, of it as well. Um, you know, that was some of the feedback that you received also that I think was eye opening for you was that, you know, if I, if I had this up and running, then I could contribute to the ease of, of doing business for myself, but also for just continuing to be able to offer, you know, you know, our product, um, you know, to your current customers and whatnot. So I think that's what came out of kind of also what triggered, you know, this profit center, how to even make it more of a profit center by putting it on online as well. And I think what's important for uh, our listeners is that, but the product itself is still a complementary product to what you're doing. You know, it's just now you're adding an additional platform on how to distribute or deliver the product. But it didn't, you didn't go from, you know, apples and oranges to hair, hair care products to, you know, selling, you know, something that's, you know, gym equipment or, you know, or something like that. You just didn't, you know, you're staying within, again, that complementary, that congruent product line. Now you can get creative because I know one of the things that you've talked about is now adding a jewelry line to that. But see, again, still very complimentary because it's part of the beauty industry. You know, let's get some accessories to go with the hair. And, you know, so you can continue to expand that. But I think what's important for our listeners is to make sure that you're always asking the question, is the product or the service, you know, always complimentary to my core business? Because if you start getting too far away, then it starts to get, you know, you you have to be careful because, you know, now there's, you know, there's just a different marketing strategy, different messaging that has to go along with that. And that's where people can get into trouble. You know, you can kind of take that, you know, down the wrong path if you're not careful. But the online is just a different platform for doing what you're doing now or an additional platform, not a not a different one you're still going to be doing it, you know, with your clients that that come in. Right. And that's the key about profit centers. Like even if you're adding something new, it's not starting over. Right. So you already have a base clientele that you're working this new profit center through. Obviously we want to see growth from that, but it's not, oh, now I'm launching a completely different business and starting from square one profit center should be building on top of what you have already established. Yes, that's a good point. And that's the key is, you know, getting that initial um, foundation and structure in place for your business uh, that then can, you know, support, promote, you know, these other things as time goes on. But, you know, you have to get that, you got to get the you know, the, the foundation underneath your business to be able to do that. So it's a great point. Very good point. So once someone, I mean, so Jack, let me just jump it over to you because I know that uh, in our office, you know, we've we definitely have different profit centers. Um, and for the most part, they've all worked out, but, you know, we did have a profit center. If you remember that didn't necessarily work out. Remember we tried to go down the road of Aggie May, Um, and you know, I know that in our office, we've always tried to at least create, um, you know, create it so that clients have a, 
a, kind of a one-stop shop. It sounds kind of cheesy um, to say that, but really a place where, you know, maybe I don't personally handle every need that they have, but we have, you know, we have that, uh, we have the right people in place to handle, um, you know, whether it's their health insurance, like I don't, I don't handle the health insurance, but we have talent in the office that does that. But my point to that was that, you know, it's one place that people can come to, you know, kind of have all their needs met. And I know that, you know, we did, um, you know, try to do the Aggie May. So maybe give people a little feedback on a profit center that we thought might, you know, pan out and kind of when you realize it just wasn't going to work and to just end it because sometimes profit centers, we have the best hopes for them. It it makes sense on, you know, when it's written down in black and white in the business plan and then it just doesn't. So maybe give some insight on, um, you know, going down the road of another profit center and it just not working out. Maybe when to cut the strings of it. Well, thanks for having to make me relive through all that. (laughs) Well, I will say it was many, many years ago. It was probably at least 10 years ago at this point that, that we did that, but Fine, I'll do it. <laughs> well, I mean, the we in our business, for example, you know, we have you know different profit centers. And again, getting back to that, you know, being congruent. So we have, you know, property and casualty insurance for you know we do a lot of business and farm insurance, um, and then we also do life insurance, which again is very congruent to the other types of insurance that we do with clients. And we do health insurance. So again, very congruent with these other types of insurance. And we do investments with clients. Again, fits in with the overall planning piece that we we do with clients. So, so, you know, in those particular, those have all worked well for us um, over the years and have really developed into good profit centers. And the reason is, is they were, I think that they were really came out of a more of an organic approach that, you know, we, we started to bring talent into the business uh, because you got to remember there's like what Jennifer's going through where you have, you know, tangible product lines that you're selling and you train the people that you have doing your core business to be able to communicate and hopefully sell some of those tangible products to your existing customer base. In our case, we're you know we're not selling tangible products. We're selling um, good. We're selling services and, and insurance products, but they're not anything you can grab hold of and and touch and feel. So, you know, it takes you know a lot of different talents to do those different profit centers. So, as we brought talent in what we begin to see is, all right, who's someone that we can begin to bring into some of these other areas? And um, because we're we're not big enough in in these other profit centers to have a full-time person, but we have some folks here that have some capacity in their schedule that we can begin to bring them in and handle some of these things. And so over time, these profit centers began to grow because as we grew, the people, you know, who were doing maybe 25% of their time towards that, they were able to grow and expand and invest more time. And it just grew over time. And, you know, their skill set, their competency in these different areas all grew over time. Then when it comes to um, Aggie May, now that was where we began to offer mortgages, especially on the commercial mortgages and the some residential, but mostly commercial and farm. And when we went down that road, um, you know, it wasn't something that we were able to kind of organically, we had to really, if we were going to do it, we had to go all in. And so we had to go out, we had to, we had to find, you know, the right kind of mortgage product, we had to find the talent. And it was really a big, big jump for us. And at the end of the day, you know, it was just too much of a jump. We, we just, it was too much uh, of a jump for, um, to try and find the right people to, to do that and to, um, and, you know, and we were exposing our clients who had a long relationship to something that we felt like, you know, we just, 
we weren't ready to go down that road, you know, and so that's when we finally decided that, you know, that probably wasn't going to be a good profit center for us to pursue. So I think, again, in our case, growing something organically where it's kind of born out of these other things that you're doing and you can develop over time is a great approach um, rather than, and I've had, you know, other folks saying, boy, we'd really like to add health insurance, you know, to our business and, you know, what we offer our clients. But again, have nobody in their office, nobody ready to go, nobody to take on that learning curve. And I just tell them, you know, that the best way to do it is to just start small and start finding someone in your office that can begin to go down that road while they're doing other things for you and then begin to grow that, you know, more organically. Um, and then as time goes on, you know, then expand and grow and add people. Uh, but you got to get that talent. So, um, so I think that was probably, you know, we invested a lot of time, you know, in that business, but at the end of the day, um, you know, it was just too big of a jump for us, um, you know, and so it just didn't work. So, um, but now that's not to say that's going to be the case every time, but, you know, in this t in particular case, it was, but from a recommendation standpoint to our listeners, I would ask the question, if we want to add, a, especially in a service business, or if we want to add another profit center or another line, can it be done slow and organically or do we have to make a big jump hiring people and, and just bringing in a lot of stuff into our current culture and then weigh that out, you know, really weigh out that profit center because I would certainly encourage you to stay with profit centers that can grow more organically if possible, you know, and let them develop over, you know, intentionally you know, no, you know, you don't just kind of just hope it happens. You're still very intentional about it, but let it grow a little bit slower over time than, than making those big jumps. I was going to say, you bring up a good point, um, you know, in our, in the difference between you and Jennifer um, is that, you know, obviously a new profit center is going to take some level of investment. So for Jennifer, it's an investment maybe of more actual product and a, a different platform. For us, it's more an investment of people um, and getting them, getting them trained and getting them educated. And, and so it's a different type of investment, but another, nevertheless, still an investment. So for our listeners, you know, who are willing to, um, you know, that really want to take on that new profit center, whether it's investing into people or more product. Now, how do we go about in, in finding that investment well, and could it look differently than how you initially invested in your in your business the first time to actually start it could it look different let's hope it looks different <laughs> <laughs> if it looks different that's probably a good sign <laughs> but you know real quick before I jump into that you know I'm on the same page with you I think that that's a good sign of adding profit centers if you can do it organically so for my business we have two employees that are paid hourly that are learning how to ship things out from our online store. And in hopes, right down the road, we can hire someone to just take on the online store as a whole. But kind of that slow and grow mentality is definitely, I think, the right approach when it comes to profit centers. Now, what were you asking us, Stace? <laughs> uh, my, my question was that um, you know, that we know that we need to make an investment right into our new profit center, whether that's investing in people and their education or investing like in you, Jen, you maybe have to invest in having more of a supply of your product um, and investing in the platform, um, you know, that you actually sell your product on. So how do we, you know, what would be your recommendations as far as, you know, how do you, how do you fund that new profit center? You know, and does that, can that funding look different than when you originally started your business? Well, funny because we had this conversation, dad, when, when I told you about the online store and the first conversation we had was, okay, do I take funding from my business to invest in, to invest in this profit center or do I take personal money 
to invest in this profit center. Again, I think for us and our unique situation, it was not a huge investment to, you know, get the online store going. Of course, we had to buy some supplies, but we already have our inventory and we're expecting to have to purchase up front more inventory. Yeah, we're going to be thankful it wasn't the same investment as five years ago in the original business. Yeah, I mean, I think in Jen's case, I mean, we, you know, obviously early on, you know, she, you know, needed to go out and get financing and, you know, do other things because it was, there were some really large expenditures that happened to happen up front, um, where hopefully on your profit centers, you know, you can add those and, and really fund them more out of cash flow uh, than you know, going out and borrowing money or, you know, again, it depends on the business, obviously. I mean, you know, sometimes you might have to, you know, go out and get a, you know, a, a business loan or a line of credit or something to, you know, to really ramp up, you know, that, that, um, that product line. Um, but, you know, it, it's going to be kind of case by case or situation by situation, but, you know, I mean, Jennifer came to me with that question. Of course, I said, well, let's do it out of the business because, you know, I want to be part of the profits of that baby. So, you know, let's, uh, you know, that's, you know, I don't want to, I don't want you doing it on your own. I want you doing it with me as a partner. <laughs> but I think in our situation, you know, now, like, you know, bringing up, you know, the failed profit center, you know, we had to go out and invest money and we and, and it was paid out of cash flow. We didn't borrow, but now all of a sudden we had to pay someone to come in who had some level of expertise. So we had to give them income before we really had any revenue from that profit center, you know, and that was money going out the door. Obviously we had to ramp up, you know, on some different type of um, advertising and you know, and there was just, there was a lot of upfront expense with that. Again, was was paid out of the cash flow of our already established business. Um, but the hard part with services like that is it's, it's hard to get any level of understanding of when you're going to be getting any kind of return on it um, or any revenue back on it. Sometimes in retail, I, you know, you can kind of see where you're at in, like in Jen's case, she sees what her retail is producing now. Um, so you're certainly not gonna probably nail it perfectly, but you can project a little bit, okay, well, you know, with this additional investment of for product and some additional investment in getting it up online, I mean, we're gonna see a pretty quick turnaround of some revenue from that. Now, the question is gonna be, Am I taking my, in her case, am I already taking my existing revenue and just splitting it between two different platforms, the in-store and the online, but I'm not really getting any more revenue, you know, so that's going to be what we're going to have to watch there. Um, but when you're doing like in our case, a service or, you know, like an, an insurance product, a um, little harder to measure maybe. That's why, again, I like the organic. I like taking people saying, here's my current talent and we want to add the profit center of health insurance. All right, well, we don't really have many clients doing that. So I have this person over here that's doing this particular job for us that we feel like we could bring that into their job description without overwhelming them. And we now all of a sudden we're not making a investment of another salary to do that. You know, so now we start down this road and we begin to see, wow, you know, we're getting traction in this. So our first step is not going out and hiring someone particularly. Now it's readjusting their job description to where maybe, all right, they were spending 80% of their time on what they were doing before, 20% on this new profit center. As we get busier and we see, okay, that's growing. So now maybe it's 60, 40 now. And so now we're looking at the job description, say, all right, what do we need to pull away from them and maybe shift over to someone else? And we just start to you know, kind of have that, those little maneuvers until we see that now we've kind of tipped, you know, we've had the tipping point to where now we're beyond 50% of their time on this new profit center 
Now we're now we have to ask the question, all right, who are we hiring or what are we doing now with their previous job description? Where does that bit where does that go? Do we hire into that role? So we will because we want that that person to get you know kind of mm-hmm. to capacity, maybe that 70%, 80% of capacity with this new profit center. We want to get someone hired into their old job description and now begin to think about. All right, now who do we need to be bringing into this new profit center as a second person? Because we have someone that's 80% at capacity. We don't want them to get it beyond 100 because we want to leave 20% of capacity to begin training a new person, you know, for continued growth. So that's how you would kind of walk it out organically with someone. Um, if again, because you already have that foundation underneath you to be able to you know, think it through that way. And, and that's what we've done. And then now, for example, just, I used health insurance, you know, now we have, um, you know, three full-time people in that, in that department, and that's all they do. Um, And, and, and the lady that started that, you know, she heads up that department, she has two full-time and based on our growth, you know, we're probably going to be looking at someone else, you know, in the near future to be adding to that profit center. Um, So, but again, that's all happened over quite a few years. Well, I think that you guys have answered a lot, you know, the main question here, how and when definitely the profit centers are out there, especially, you know, now that we have lived through um, and still are, but now that we have experienced, um, you know, a challenge, a pandemic that, you know, has created a lot of uphill challenges for people also creates opportunities, you know, new ideas are born out of it. So the profit centers are definitely out there. um, I think for all businesses and um, you know, like I said earlier, entrepreneurs are some of the most creative people that I know. And, you know, if they can take, they can take uh, lemons and make some lemonade, they certainly will. So um, definitely everyone stay encouraged to find those profit centers that um, would just be organic in your own business. Um, We want to thank you guys for listening today, as always. Um, Please, you can reach us. You can email us. We would love to hear from you guys. If you guys have any questions or just have something that maybe you're struggling with in your business, you can email us at two daughters and their dad. That is T-W-O daughters and their dad at gmail.com. We want to thank you guys again for listening today. And until we can be together again, Everyone stay safe, be kind to each other and be kind to yourself. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. We want to thank you for listening today. Please subscribe so you never miss an episode. Leave us a positive review. And we want to say thank you to our sponsors, Dempsey Weiss and Associates and J Faith Hair Studio.